you. You're welcome. Who named your name? Um, my nephew, actually. He couldn't say my real name. Uh-huh. So I've been called Mimi pretty much all my life. So Mimi, tell me about yourself. Where are you from? I'm from here, Garden Grove. Yeah. I pretty much, I grew up here. Uh-huh. I've been homeless for about two and a half years. Uh-huh. So are you here by yourself or with a family? Um, at first I was coming with my family, with my kids and uh -huh. my husband. Uh-huh. And then things changed because I relapsed after 18 years. Hmm? What does I that relapsed. Mean? Um, I started using drugs again. Oh, so it was a drug issue. Yes. And then we became homeless. We were sleeping at the Garden Grove on library. Uh-huh. Well, actually, anywhere we could possibly go uh -huh. and not be harassed by the uh -huh. cops. We stayed out in Balboa for a few months. Uh -huh. And we found this ministry. Came, you know, ate, shower. Uh-huh. And then I got too heavy on the drugs. And I called my sister. Uh -huh. I have an open case right now with social uh -huh. services. So uh -huh. my sister has my kids. How many kids do you have? I have three. How well, old are they? Four. Four all together. Um, four? Yes. One of them is going to be 19. Uh -huh. I have an eight-year-old, a five-year-old, and she would have been a year and a half. She passed away. Oh, what happened to her? Yeah, I'm she, sorry. Yeah. She, um... She's the youngest, right? Yeah. She had a really um, low heart rate. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm so sorry. So when did it happen? Um, this happened last year. Oh, not long ago. Yeah. So, um... When she um, passed away, were you there with her? Yes. Okay, and you were homeless at the time, right? I was... I was with her until she took her very last breath, so... Mm -hmm. um, you couldn't take her to the hospital? Or? There was nothing that they could do. Oh, okay. So... It must be very difficult for you, you know, to take it. And she was such a young... But so now she's I, in heaven. She's she in a better place, yeah. So now I help out here. I volunteer. Right, right. You know, it's, it's like wonderful, yeah. There's a lot of people that you know come and go. Mm -hmm. People that are still you know using. Mm -hmm. People that don't want to get off the streets. Yeah, um, you you can be very useful, you know anybody else's lives you know don't ever think you cannot do anything because you're homeless you know what I'm it's saying? either and that's right it's either you become the streets or you get out of the streets yes you know what I mean there's so much help over here like they have people coming in from the county trying to help right. you know the help anybody that that wants the help uh-huh but it's up to choose, you right? right it's all they about the choice not to it's like then don't sit there and uh -huh. be like, oh, I'm homeless. We'll do something about it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's yeah. so many resources. There's don't, don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't ever give up. Like, I've been sober for, I'm hitting my year mark. This, wow. This 30th of Wonderful. November, I hit my year sobriety. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. It yeah. feels really good. You know, uh -huh. don't get me wrong. I've had, uh -huh. you know, the, my moments that... I want to use, mm -hmm. but I think about my children. Right. And mm -hmm. I want my children back. Right. That's, so, that's right. The kids can be a good motivation for mama. They are. And then, yeah. you know, getting involved with the ministry, getting involved with anything. You right. Know, it's like uh -huh. it helps. And I've. Yeah, help you to stay stronger. I am and on healthier. the bus yeah. all the time. So it's like I go ahead and I. Hey, uh -huh. you know what? You want to get off the street? There's a place. We uh -huh. there's food. There's showers. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Right. You know, it's uh -huh. like come on down. Well, uh -huh. are you gonna be there? Yes, I'm gonna be there. You know, I there's a lot of people that I've met on the bus and now come here. Uh huh. You know, people yeah. that I see like if we have food and I'll go ahead and 
pass it around. Like uh -huh. if I have a little bit of money, I'll go ahead and buy food and give it to those people, you know, that are in need. Uh huh. You, you got to do it for yourself. Right. If you really want it, uh -huh. you got to do it for yourself. And you know, once you're obedient to God, uh -huh. everything will fall into place. Uh -huh. Like God first. Yeah. God first and he will truly bless your, your life and he'll change your life. Uh -huh. Right. You, you seem like a very focused, very goal-minded, which is good, which makes you to keep going, right? And you know, yeah. I like I said, I've been out on the streets for two and a half years and it's rough. You are trying to get out of it, right? Yes. That kind of mentality is very necessary for you to, you know, leave from the street as soon as possible, I believe. Like like you said, some people don't feel like they need to, they well, stay there long. Well, you don't they think that it's, it's, like you said, it's choices. It's yeah. like you either uh -huh. choose this or you choose your drugs. Right. So, stop choosing this. Stop yeah. choosing your drugs. If they feel comfortable about drug and enjoying it, uh, that makes them to stay there, like, as a comfort zone, which is not a true comfort zone, right? The way I see it is, if you choose the uh -huh. streets, if you choose to be out there, uh -huh. then don't sit there and pity yourself and make other people feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. Like You think some of them are enjoying it? Yes. That's not good, right? Honestly, I do. Because yeah. I know that when I was using drugs, right. I was enjoying it. It's like a pity party, right? Yes, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is, but if you really want to change your life around, uh -huh. you can. Anything is possible. Right. Anything. There is um, a guy here. His name is Chris. Uh huh. I love that guy. He's he was homeless too. Yes. Uh huh. And then from here, they helped him out. He's got his own place in uh -huh. Mission Viejo. Own place. His own place. Well, he has wow. a roommate, but That's they got nice. him off the streets. Was he really motivated to get out of the You know homeless? what? At first he wasn't. At first uh -huh. he wasn't because the drugs were like, you know. They sound like very promising, right? It is. Uh -huh. It is. That's what I'm seeing. If you choose to get out, uh -huh. you know, it's like time is everything. Right. You know, but. Time if, goes so fast, you know. When your time yeah. comes up and God's saying, okay, you know what? Let me pull you out. Right. And you don't want to get pulled out. Then you're going to stay in there and just keep right. on staying in there, staying in there. That's true. But like I said, Chris, he lives in Mission Viejo, uh -huh. has a beautiful apartment. Wow, nice. Beautiful apartment. He's got his own bedroom. He's got his bed. But can he handle that like at the rent? You know what? He can because he's on a low income base. Oh, So okay. from here, the advocates that come over here, uh -huh. they helped him. Uh -huh. Get a place, and there's enough, there's like plenty of stories from this ministry that people have left because they have their own place. Uh -huh. They're in a, they're either at Mercy House, they're at Colette's, they're at Thomas House. They're, you know, different programs for different people depending uh -huh. on your needs and, you know, what what exactly they can help you with. Uh -huh. So you're not stuck in a rut. Right. That's what I'm saying. If you want to get off the streets, you can. Mm -hmm. But that's up to you. So like a housing they provide, uh, is that something not too expensive for them to maintain? Correct. Oh. So it's Do they have to have a job though? No, you don't. But in really? some places you do. Oh, okay. And some of the shelters you do need to have a job. Uh -huh. Because you have to follow their protocols, their, their procedures. Uh -huh. How hard is that? Get a job. Get random drug testing. Just so you could show your accountability to yeah, them, yeah. so you could stay there. Like you know, I think it should be a step. You should, you know, work for helping these people to to be connected. <laughs> I, would, I would love that. That's why I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that's why I volunteer my time. Yeah. And I help out the, the best that I can because mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there, especially women in domestic violence. You know, it's like I've been through it. Right. I've been through it, mm -hmm. and it's. It's sad because mm -hmm. a lot of women think that they don't have a mm -hmm. choice. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing because of my children. I'm seeing, I did that. I made the mistake mm -hmm. to stay with my ex-husband yeah. uh -huh. for my children. Right. I, he could have killed me. Where he, is he? <sighs> well, he was in jail for two years. For, oh, he's in jail? No, he was. He's out now. He was uh -huh. in jail for um, two years 
because of for child endangerment. Oh, that's not good. And we, like right now, for instance, like my story, my case right now, what I'm going mm -hmm. through is I have a restraining order with this man. And mm -hmm. my social worker wants to remove this, the restraining order because she wants him to visit the, the kids. And you're not with the kids. That's a difficult situation. Well, he's not supposed to be around me because the restraining order is for three years. Oh, around you, not around Robert, the kids. No, around all of us, around oh. me, around the children. He's not supposed to. Yeah. But social services, mm -hmm. it fell under the cracks because mm -hmm. the first social sur the first social worker that I had, her name is Genoveva. Mm -hmm. I gave her mm -hmm. all of my restraining orders that I had on this mm -hmm. man, and she didn't put it on the file. The second social worker, oh. Lorraine, she didn't put it in the files either. She didn't put any of my certificates of completion, whatever I was doing. Mm -hmm. Well, now, I want to say nine months later, mm -hmm. okay, now that he's out of jail, he's been out of jail for about six months now. Now that he's out of jail, he's had his visits with the kids. He's been able to see them. He's been able to contact them or be around them. Mm -hmm. But the restraining order was still there. Oh, so he's not seeing the kids yet? No, he is. Is? Yes. By and the way, then, but last week uh -huh. they terminated our social worker terminated his visits because she came across the restraining order, and I told her I said this should have been in effect since he got out. Uh -huh. I said you guys, when he got out, you guys handed him everything, uh -huh. everything that I had worked for, he already had, which is not fair. Uh -huh. He needed to work his way down and work his way up, just like I did. Right. So. When I was talking to my social worker, I uh -huh. was like, where's the justice? Where's the justice for my children? Being away uh, from this man. Yeah, they need to be safe. So, right, so she's all like, well, we're trying to do, I'm like, no, you're not trying to do anything. You're trying to modify the restraining order so he could have uh -huh. that privilege. She's a the nice kids. smile. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I'm out so he could see the children. Uh -huh. Where's the justice on that? Yeah. He could snap at any time. Right. I said, look at his history because that's what you guys are going to do. When a, when an open case right. gets started, and the, when, my we, when I know what made him to be in jail, so <laughs> that's really concerning. By the way, I, uh, I'm wondering about his status. You know, where is he? Is he, in, he's, is he on the street or no, is he he's, with the he's family? Here, no, he's here. He's staying at a... Um, it's like a sober living home. Oh, he got a, some assistant. Pro no, yeah. actually, see, this was the thing. He called me when he got out of jail after he like relapsed for like three days. And mm -hmm. he calls me and where he's at now, I went ahead and I put him in there. I helped him out to get into the place where he's at now. You did? I did. That's nice. You know, because I had promised. What made you to? I had promised my children that no matter what, I would try to help their dad out. That's a wonderful, you know, attitude, yeah. So I've never bad mouth, you know, their dad. I've never, right. like two other people, okay, fine, different, but never in front of my children. It would help their self-esteem, right? Never in front of my children because they know my children have gone through a lot. Right. Because I have put them through through that. Right. So you said your kids are with your... With my sister. Sister. Um, in Anaheim. Yeah. So, um, do they get a help financially to support yes. them? From the you? government, no, the government, government pays my sister to yeah. take care of my children. What's the under name? What what kind of? I'm not sure, but now she's a foster parent. She already oh, got her certificate oh, yeah. to foster, foster my children. Foster home, yeah. yeah thank you. I have a little understanding about it. <laughs> I tried to be one before. By the way, so Mimi, do you, uh, do you work right now? What, no, I your, don't. Yeah, I don't work right now, but I am looking for work right now uh -huh. because now you're, I you're have. You're searching, yeah. Well, no, the reason why is because I had to do a very intense program, which is called uh -huh. perinatal. Uh -huh. What's that? And that program, I have to go and drug test twice a week. I have to have I have to do class. I have oh, to do counseling. Yeah, right. So it's very intense and it's different phases that you go through. Yeah. But I'm done with it. Great. I graduate. I graduate. Oh, <laughs> I graduate. No, wait a minute. <laughs> One last time. <laughs> we did I graduate. it. Um, I can see your face, the smiling face again. Good. I, I graduate on the uh -huh. 16th of this month. 
I get my certificate. Thank yeah. you. Of You're completion. Welcome. So yeah. that's a huge accomplishment. Did you let your kids know about it? I'm trying to get my kids to go to it. So yeah. I already talked to my social worker and told her, and she's yes. going to go ahead and arrange so mm -hmm. the boys could be there on Thursday, next Thursday. I think it's important for you to let your kids know mommy's a trying hard. Well, the kids tell me all the time that they're so proud of me. They're like, I can't oh, wait until great. you get your yeah. year chip. So they're waiting for my year chip. Uh -huh. And I'm all like, okay, that's the day after your yeah. brother's birthday. Right. That's good. So on November 30th, uh -huh. it's my year mark. Okay. So this month is, is, is my month. You know what I mean? Yeah, I finished, uh -huh. I finished my class. I get my mm -hmm. certificate, I get my year chip, and my kids are like, Mom, we're so proud of you. Mm -hmm. Right, that's you know? good. So they tell me, no, boy, you're not going to put any more, you know, dirty stuff in your body anymore. I'm mm -hmm. like, nope, no more babies. I go, I'm here for you. I hope the church could uh, let you just speak up, like, you know that there's a program, TED, people speak up, you know, their opinions, stuff like that, their success stories, you know. I've never heard of that. You never heard of it? No. Uh, maybe I can uh, let you know the link of it. Okay. By the way, like uh, in here where people come in, uh, if they, I can suggest them, if they can let you stand and talk to them, your testimony, particularly the drug issue, it can be really, the you know, drug, it's, it, helpful it plays a them. huge role. A huge yeah, role. Because many people cannot get out of homelessness because of the drug, you know. And take. you think that you have control of it, but you don't. Anybody mm -hmm. that says that? So what's the secret of your case? To the make secret sure of my case? Yeah. Honestly, I would have to say God. Yeah. I moved out of his way so he could go ahead and do his will with me. Mm -hmm. That's awesome story. So yeah. I think that we go ahead and we stand in God's way and don't allow Him mm -hmm. to do His praise. Are you a Christian or? Yes, I was raised Catholic, uh -huh. and um, now I attend this church on oh. Sundays. Oh, okay. How long? Have um, been it's here? been like two months. Two months. Okay. Two months that I've been attending this church. Okay, so before you come to this church, I was going to. Uh, you are going to a Catholic church? No, I was going to another Christian church that is by the um, Garden Grove Library. So you were Christian before you became homeless? Right. Okay. Um, so how did it affect you, you know, your faith? I lost your myself. Situation? I lost yeah. myself. I lost my faith in God. Yeah, because you were discouraged, huh? I was more like what can i do it's like i have my kids with me it's like then seeing women out on the street with their kids and i'm like i don't want this and mm -hmm. what made me decide to call my sister mm -hmm. um almost a year ago see everything happened in november right what made me decide to call my sister was that my alexander mm -hmm. had said to me it's not fair how nicholas gets to sleep on a bed Mm -hmm. And Carlos and I have to sleep in the back seat of the van. Mm -hmm. And right there, I knew that I was being very selfish with my children. And it's like I couldn't do that to them anymore. So I called my sister. It was mm -hmm. the hardest thing. Yeah. For the best for them, right? But it was, it was. And I, mm -hmm. I still think that it, it was the best decision that I made for my children. Even though, yeah, this is why people say, "Woman is weak, but mama, mother is uh, strong." Yeah, you did it for the better future. So it was hard. It was hard. Yeah, I know. But I'm, I couldn't be selfish anymore. Right. You know. And right. You did it right. You know. You still contact with them, right? I do. I thing. see them, I talk to them, you uh -huh. know, I get to spend time with them. Right. But not the way I want it. But you know what? It's okay because for right now, this is the way God wants it. Mm -hmm. You know, usually people, when they are in a situation like this, when you lose many things that are valuable for you, you know, you're in trouble like that, they can walk away from God. They, they can, you know, doubt about God's love or existence. It didn't happen to you? Or you no, did, did you become stronger in faith? I did. I did. Because mm -hmm. I started 
at first it was like, I want my kids back. I want my kids back. And that's mm -hmm. not the way it works. That's not the way God has it planned out. God wants you to work on you and stay focused on yourself. And being so it was obedient. about you. He's interested in you. Right. And changing yeah. your ways. He could put you in the furnace and to, you know, make it to be stronger. And you know what? I have conquered and I have passed all of the tests that I could possibly pass. On the bus, I've been offered drugs. I've been offered so many things. And yeah, you were tempted by the devil, but then... <clears throat> You've been past all of these tests. That's and great. then my husband, my current husband, you know, he's not around right now. And um, it's been hard. It's been hard without oh, this him This is being... not the one who was in the jail? No. Did you divorce from the yeah, last from, one? Yeah. Is this a Christian man? He's Catholic. The one who is with you? Yeah. My current husband, he's Catholic. Okay. Um... So how is your relationship? Um, with the we were both one? using. We were both using together. I. He relapsed because of me, because I offered it to him. And. He's doing okay with that. Is he? I'm sorry. He's doing okay with that. He's he's no longer using, which is a good thing. Um, oh, you're talking about the drug. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, but doesn't he need uh, rehab also? Yes, that's what he's doing right now. Okay, good, good. That's uh, what he's doing right now. Mimi, so. what I can think of is uh, it's awesome that you have a faith in God. Not not everybody have a faith like that. They can many people can just uh, look for excuses. You know what I'm saying? But, that's the thing. Excuses. You need right. to hold yourself accountable for everything that you do. Don't blame it on anybody else because they were your choices. Right. Your actions. Uh -huh. Nobody else's. Nobody made you do anything but yourself. That's the way you, you gave, go for the self pity part. <laughs> you gave right? yourself that permission, that authority to go and do whatever you're doing. Nobody else did. I believe that once you hold yourself accountable for your own actions, uh -huh. everything will start falling into place. Be obedient to God. Step out of His way and allow Him right. to do His mercy on you. Right. And everything, I promise you. Everything will fall into place because that's the way how my life has been. Right. It's like once I stepped away and said, you know what? I give up. I surrender. I yeah. surrender. You do what's best for me. You do what's best for my children. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I've been, I've been doing so good. I've been blessed in mm -hmm. so many different ways. See, when you make a right choice in him, he helps you out, right? You can you know, look up for the better future. I have an awesome best friend. She actually volunteers here at the ministry too. Yeah. Tish. It's important to be connected to the uh, godly people, right? In church like this. So, um, what well, the thing is, um, let's say, it's important for you to stay focused on God and His will like this. So, you will know that you are in His training. Right, and then uh, when you're I'm ready, here to serve. I'm when here. You're ready, so you'll be out of this wilderness. What God has for you, for temporarily, and also I think I, sh I think you should really, you know, rebuke the spirit behind this, the spirit of the devil. That you know, he comes with a drug as a temptation. He has been tried to knock, knock you down, and with your, uh, the previous husband. Which is an ongoing thing, right? Because uh, between kids. Yes. And also your current husband, he got into this drugs somewhere around a little bit. But, you know, when we open the door to the devil about something, he comes in. He comes in and he's going to keep, you know, throwing it to us. So what I'm saying is that we have to keep fighting back to him. So... God says that we can rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Continuously. So you can cut out this uh, curse. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because uh, you allowed him to be in your place, in your life, and keep using it. You know what I'm saying? So we you have just to... got to reverse it, and you got to start using God yeah. and start speaking his name, start putting the word out there, and right. people will listen. Uh -huh. People will listen, right. but in all in due time, when they're ready 
to hear the gospel when they're ready for all of that. People will listen. People will understand. Oh my gosh, I could have been doing this this whole entire time. Mm -hmm. It's never too late to seek God. Yeah. So what? Uh, during two years and a half, you said being homeless. So what was the most difficult thing you were dealing with, and you know, what was the thing that you were expecting from people around you? I wasn't you expecting anything. That's the thing. My husband was working, he was doing side jobs, he was hustling, he, you know, it's like when we had the opportunity, when my husband had money, we mm -hmm. went and we would stay in a motel room. Mm -hmm. um, little things, we never panhandled, I could never do that. Mm -hmm. um, we, there was times that, yeah, we, we had to go into grocery stores and, you know, get food and stuff like that mm -hmm. but when we were taking the food from the stores mm -hmm. and when my husband had money we would go back to the stores and be like look mm -hmm. I'm sorry this is what we did here's the money mm -hmm. you know sometimes I see ladies or you know a couple you know out there for panhandling with their own kids or sometimes adults. I can't do that I, you know, I can't I can't it submit, feel bad, you know I couldn't kids. submit my children to that some people just use their children. The reason why yeah. is because my children had no choice in this situation. Mm -hmm. I made the choices for them. Mm -hmm. I was being selfish. I was doing all of this to my children. Mm -hmm. They had no choice. Mm -hmm. So as a mother, I would never submit my children to that. Okay, so that's important. Yeah, good that uh, you... I really would never have somebody feel pity for me or for my children because we're out on the streets. We, you know what, honestly, mm -hmm. I would go ahead and shower my kids in the in the Maybe library. Somebody's... No, Phoebe, he's looking for his oh, dog. Oh, okay. oh she's not yelling at <laughs> Of course she is, Mikey. Look at the sky. So How are you, honey? Better. Yeah? Yeah, now that spider bite cleared up. Oh, that's good. There's I'm Mike and Phoebe. Where's Phoebe? Phoebe? Phoebe is somewhere around. Oh, oh, she's around. oh I thought you were with her. <laughs> By the way, I'm back to you. So, <laughs> there was that. <laughs> um, okay. So, um, that was like my thing, you know what I mean? I just, I never, I never panhandled. I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. I tried. Mm -hmm. I tried, and this was me like sending them like, yeah, no. You didn't like that. Yeah. I just didn't want, I put myself in that situation. I right. put I put us out on the streets, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. We were out on the streets. So what gave me the rights to take somebody else's money mm -hmm. so they could feel sorry for me? And Maybe yeah. it was pride, I don't know. Maybe it was pride that I didn't want people to feel sorry for me. Like, oh, look at this lady with these kids and her husband and, right. you know what I mean? We made, we, <laughs> We made it work. And you know what? Um, it's not for everybody's cases, but I see people who are out there with holding this, uh, you know, paper, mm -hmm. like uh, need help, whatever, homeless, whatever. Many of them out there, they are just uh, doing that to live life easy. You know, that's, that's not good for them. It's like it's a bad as uh, like a taking drug. In it's funny, ways. right? It's funny because my dad, he used to work for CVS, a distribution center in La Habra, and there was this man outside, always panhandling. And my dad, they were, you know, my dad would always say hi to him mm -hmm. and always bring him coffee. And one day, my dad had the courage to ask him. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, why, why out here? Why? Why get all this money? Why panhandle? Mm -hmm. Why don't you go and get, you know, help? Go to a shelter, go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he told my dad, you know what, Carlos? He said, I have a home. So he was not real. He said, I have a home. Yeah. He's all like, I probably make more money. Honest. Right. He said, I probably, I probably make more money than you. Mm -hmm. He's all, I make about anywhere between five to seven hundred dollars a day. That's kind of he's stealing. Always, exactly. Yeah. He's all, but I don't have to pay taxes out of that. He's all, I don't have to pay taxes out of that. Wow. He's all, this is my life. This is how I work. 
This this man, when you find out, this man you had a five be quiet bedroom. About that. Right, this man had five bedroom home. Think about all these people who were um, robbed money from him, who are you know struggle financially. Well, there's a lot of people Probably. out on the streets that have homes, but they don't want to be there. Yeah, I know that uh, that's one of the things that we have to really, really make it straight because these guys can block the way to help people who are in need, actually. I think that once you are homeless and you get... And it's you get to people experience, to experience You get to experience how rough it is out here. Like, seriously, you got to be street smart. In other words, you got to know who's playing you and who's not. It's just like the real world. It's like you having a job and, you know, this coworker or this coworker, whatever. But it's the same thing out on the streets. Like, Mikey over there, for instance. I love you, dude. You know, I could be like Mikey, you know, what the heck, dude, you know, and you, you get to know their sincerity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mikey has gone through a lot too. And yeah. he's got he has soft and hard, I can you know? tell. Yeah, yeah, he does. But you get to know those people. You get to know how they truly are. Right. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Who has that genuine heart and it's like really try to get off the street See, and try to do this and try yeah. to do that. Isn't it true that like some people who are gone through the same situation like uh, this tough lifestyle and, and homelessness, some people still have a good heart. Some people become really, really evil. Yes. And then, you know what I'm saying? That they complain and they, you know, hurt other people back and stuff. And so this is all about do, the choices. It is. Yeah. And if the choices are, it's either we're still humble or we're gonna go ahead and mm -hmm. use the drugs. Right. Because it's the drugs that, that, you know, make a difference in, in all of us. So what is it like to take a drug, you know, the, for a person, the changes of the personality, a way of thinking, can you explain a little bit? For me, I was using methamphetamine. And my excuse at the time, uh -huh. because I wanted to use was, I need to stay up for my children. But that wasn't true, I wanted, to stay up because I wanted to use. Oh, I wanted to stay good, up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you put the drug or yourself first, then your pleasure first, then then his. my children. Exactly. Yeah. That's what the devil does. They would try to, you know, kind of like uh, divide you guys, and then make you to focus something wrong to destroy you. But that's what I'm saying. Once you place God and you get out of His way. Mm -hmm. everything falls into place. So uh, the, at the first time, what made you to involved to the drug? When I was 16, I... My dad was living a double life. And I went snooping through my mom's stuff and found out pictures and found letters. Um, my mom had hired a private investigator. So I've been out on my own since I was 16 years old. I've been, I started using when I was 16. And then I found out at the age of 22, I found out that I was pregnant with my oldest son. And I stopped. I stopped and didn't think twice about using drugs. And then after 18 years, I relapsed again. We were losing our home. I didn't know what to do. And I fell so defeated. So I'm like, you know, I wasn't thinking about my children, obviously. So I started using again. My next door neighbor was a dealer. And another neighbor behind us um, was using. And we just started using together. Um, the temptation is uh, very close to you and uh, around you. It but, is. But can you tell? Can you tell these people are, you know, involving those, uh, you know, this stuff? Or will you just uh, find out, you know? No, I knew that my neighbors were, you know, we were living there for like seven years. And I didn't even, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I would always go next door and like, being on his door, I'd be like, dude, you know, it's like we could smell what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. It's like my door's open, my kids are outside. And then at the last year that we were there, that's when I just, you know, we were losing our place. And So that, that was something you shouldn't touch. 
What if you didn't touch it, you didn't go that way, then your life could be changed. Right, my life could be completely different, but this is the way my life turned out. Right. Um, do I regret it? Uh-huh. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't regret it. If I had one chance to do my life all over again, mm -hmm. I would do it the same way. What do you mean? I would do it the same way because this is the way God wanted my life to be so I could better myself. No regrets. Because for me, regrets would mean that so, uh, I would regret my children, having my children at the time that yeah, I had them. Like um, when someone out there, you know, tried to try something new like a drug or, or something else that is harmful, what would you say to them? I could use my son as a perfect example. He's mm -hmm. 19 years, well, he's going to be 19 on the 29th of this month. Mm -hmm. My son could have fallen to drugs. He could have fallen to gangs. He could have fallen into alcohol. Yeah. But I talk to my kids the way I would talk to anybody, with all honesty. No sugarcoating, no hidden messages. Mm -hmm. Like I told my son, I'm like, look, do you want to live this life? Because my son tried marijuana once. Uh -oh. And I told him, I said, look. By the curiosity? Yeah. And he's like, Even Mom. though he saw um, his parents, you know, I couldn't tell life him. and he still. I couldn't tell him, you know, I couldn't yell at him. I couldn't. Because that would make me the biggest hypocrite. Right. Because my kids knew that I was using drugs. My, my son knew that I was using drugs. So I told him, I said, look, you're 18, dude. I can't tell you no, and I can't tell you yes. But I could tell you, you've seen what drugs have done to me. You've seen the lifestyle that I have put you guys through. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to do that? Mm -hmm. Don't follow in my footsteps. Right. Be a better person. Mm -hmm. Go to college. Have a life. Have a career. Mm -hmm. So you're not mad, Mom? Yes, I am mad. But you're 18. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you. I can't bend you over my knees and thank you. I can't do that. The best thing that I could do is I could show you because you've lived it. My life. You don't want to go down that route. Mm -hmm. I want better things for you. Mm -hmm. I'm also, what's the point? Your choices, your choices, son. You either choose the righteous mm -hmm. way, mm -hmm. or you choose the, the curvy and roller coaster and all the BS that you could handle. I said, I know I did something good in you. Mm -hmm. I said, and I know that you're gonna choose the right thing. You have to, you have to separate yourself from mm -hmm. your friends, from all that bad energy. Mm -hmm. And I always tell him, I'm all, don't allow anybody to steal your energy. Mm -hmm. You choose your friends. Don't have your Hi friends Jay. choose you. Hi, Jay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, so like um, this word, I think it's very important to know um, what this word is offering to us. Not everything is good, right? And no. there's an evil Satan in this Well, world. every time you wake up in the morning, he's right there with his and foot sticking out, alone. like ready for you to trip. God is with us. You know? We have to go with him, not the, anything in the word that the devil is uh, offering The stronger us. your faith is, the more challenges are going to come your way. The more the devil is going to be like, boom, I'm right there. Because Look, he knows right that there. you're worthy to fight with. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The more you are obedient, the more you put God first, the devil has no chance. And your, your struggles, you know, your trials, actually somewhere around to build you up, right? Stronger. Yes. Right? I am much stronger than I was a year ago. I could tell you that much. I don't know how people can live <laughs> in this world without faith in God. I don't either. Because they cannot strong enough, you know, if it's from their own strength, you know, because uh, we have a consistent enemy who fights with us, who is invisible, the devil I'm talking about, you know, with a lot of uh, temptations.
Temptation is everywhere. And most of us... Everywhere. Yes, because we are in that environment, this whole world, you know. Most and it of doesn't, us. it doesn't necessarily have to be on drugs. It could be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to take yeah. this. <gasps> That's the guy I'm talking to you about, Chris. Oh, yes. the guy with the backpack? Yes. Oh, okay. We should hear from him too. By the way, so... Um, so good that you know Christ. I right? do. Yeah? I he's do. the only strength from you, and he's the only one who can pick you up from this pit, you know? He will never put more on your plate than you can handle. Yeah. He will never you allow your plate. You have a beautiful plate. blue sky today. I know, it's so beautiful. He yeah, will I'm never... The nice background of He you. will never <laughs> allow your plate to tip over, because he'll be right there, right by your side, mm -hmm. at all times. So, um, are your kids are, you know, under God's, you know, influence or we do we whenever i see my boys and um, we have dinner because i always make um dinner for them mm -hmm. when before we eat they go wash their hands and we say grace mm -hmm. we pray over our food and then we, okay before what about in general like my sister do does pray? not my yes they do with me oh okay. but not with my sister my sister doesn't take so them you to can, church or anything yeah like you that. can pray for them you know um <clears throat> And uh, I would say encourage them to read the Bible their own. Yes, because I did get them. I did get them the in children's your, Bible. In your case, I think I was amazed that you didn't lose your faith when you were going through all these storm, right? Um, I figured probably you read the Bible your own, so that you know God's promises in there. So you go by that, so you can refuse the these lies from the enemy with, with the temptations. Uh, but if you don't read the Bible, if you don't know what God is saying in the Word, then you can easily like, oh, God doesn't love me. He doesn't you can help easily me. be discouraged. You know what I'm saying? So our faith, this is what I'm really learning uh, last few days too. Um, it's important. Our, I have our faith in God based on His Word, His promises, you know, not based on what we can get from Him. You know what I'm saying? See, that's the wrong, the wrong way of viewing things when it comes to God. Don't mm -hmm. expect anything. Yeah, kind of. Don't expect anything in return. He, we are, we are the servants for Him. We are servants of God, and we are here to serve people and not expect anything in return. You mm -hmm. expect anything in return when you're doing your service for for God. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't. Yeah. You so gotta that's go. Why. You gotta go in it so humbly yeah. and help out and be like, okay, you know what? And then your blessings will come. When uh -huh. you least expect it, your blessings are going to start pouring. Uh -huh. You know, and that's that's just that's just how it is. It's like you can't you can't sit there and think, oh, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and help this person, and I wonder what I'm going to get back in return. No. Yeah. See, like uh, that's a that's a really good example. Like uh, homelessness. I see many homeless people who don't want to go furthermore to get out of the homelessness or whatever. They just want to be in a position to receive, receive, and they are just comfortable in their position. Exactly. Like go with the self-pity party stuff. But like your case, I can tell that you know why you're here, why you are going through this. So, I mean, God, you know God's purpose for you. I'm in the palm so, of His hands. I now you want to you wanna keep it back. You want to show gratitude. Like a... Uh, the Bible says something about the uh, ten uh, represents Jesus healed them, but then only one came back to thank him. <laughs> the others didn't care. <laughs> well, right. I got healed, so why I need to go back to Jesus stuff? But this one person recognized, oh, this is God, you know, Jesus is uh, him who made me whole, so I need to re recognize him stuff. That's the faith. That's the act of faith. So. Uh, um, I met several people here, which amazed me that who are not just uh, coming here for this benefits, you know, most people come for benefits. It's, I don't say it's bad, but uh, they're just coming here to go with their, you know, homeless lifestyle, you know, routine. A lot of people are fake here. Yeah, but some of them are, they, they are kind of like uh, recognizing, just like you, why they are here for. So they have a mission heart. Right. You know, so I can see how strong they are. What made them? Because they're the faith in them, in God. You know, a lot so. of people come here just so, you know, they have somewhere to go on 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. You know, they this is like right. a home for them. Right. You know, it's like they could get food, they could get a shower, they could get, you know, they, they could get so much yeah. out of it, but you've got to utilize those tools. You use them. Like, Carol, she's she's a coordinator here. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. use her. Do, do, ask her questions. Do what you need to do so you get that extra help. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she'll, she'll go ahead and help you. Uh-huh. Maybe, know, maybe God can use you to help them to see these things like a is an opportunity, not just coming for little crumbs of their lives. Come here and then see the opportunities, you know, you know, to get out of the homelessness also, because there are many help here, and also they can come to God. I mean, they could be the main thing. Chris! You think I can talk to him? Chris! Okay, by the way, we have to close it out here. Okay. So, uh, what's your goal in the future? What's your hope? My, my whole purpose is for me to help homeless people and mm -hmm. to let them realize that there's a way out, especially for women. Mm -hmm. Women do not get discouraged. There is hope out there. All you got to do is just seek for it. Um, I'm Mimi. I'm here at this church. If you guys need anything, just come and I will go ahead and talk to you guys and give you more resources. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mimi. You Thank you. Job. Thank uh -huh. you. Uh -huh.